Hello and welcome to On Fire here on Daily Mirror Online. I'm Isvaran Ratna. This year marks two years since uh, the deadly Easter Sunday attacks in which several people were killed, including some tourists. Um, among the tourists killed were Amelie and Daniel Lindsay, uh, the dual UK and American uh, citizens, were having breakfast at the Shangri-La Hotel in Colombo when the bomb went off. Joining me on the program, uh, today is David Lindsay, uh, the brother of Emily and uh, Daniel Lindsay. David, uh, thank you for taking time to join us on this program. Thank you very much for having me. Um, so David, we, we've read and we've uh, seen visuals, we've heard of uh, you know what happened, uh, not just uh, to uh, several people, but to, to your family as well uh, on, on uh, Easter mm -hmm. Sunday. Two years on, David, how is your family coping with the situation? I think, you know, obviously things have been incredibly difficult and we're just doing our best to not move on, but, uh, you know, continue their legacies and everything that we do. I think especially for my parents, it's been very difficult. It's left a huge gaping hole in their lives, as well as mine and my younger brother, Ethan's. So it's been difficult, but we know the only option is to try and keep going. And and, and you were not here in Sri Lanka or when uh, this incident happened, am I right? No, I, I wasn't. I was studying actually for exams at that point. Okay. And and see, in Sri Lanka, David, uh, a lot of people uh, are quite outraged uh, that, uh, you know, this, this, this incident could have been avoided. There's a lot of, a lot of reports being said that... Uh, uh, the Sri Lankan authorities were aware uh, or had intelligence information that these bombings may take place. Uh, what goes through your mind when, when you hear or when you read of reports like this? Well, of course, I would prefer, prefer not to think about it. But now the priority has to be that if that were the case, that actions are taken and that it doesn't happen again. Um, since the attacks, you started a charity. Uh, in, in remembrance yeah. uh, of your brother and sister. Talk us through uh, about this charity that you are involved in. Absolutely. Um, well, I think I realized, you know, almost as soon as this happened, that that couldn't be the closing chapter in who Emily and Dan were and what they stood for. And I knew that I had to do something to continue their legacy, but also to show the way in which my family was responding to what happened. And to make sure that the anger and grief from what happened to them didn't translate into, you know, even more retaliations or even more violence or anger. So I thought it was very, very important to show a message of peace and unity in the aftermath and to show that, you know, we don't blame Sri Lanka as a country and we're unfortunately united by this, by this terrible deed. So we must do our best to try and rebuild together. And, and, and uh, you came to Sri Lanka as well right? Uh, uh, I did, uh, a, a few months afterwards. Uh, was it difficult to come to a country where, you know, something like this happened? I think, you know, I, I couldn't lie, it absolutely was difficult, but I thought it, it was necessary, you know, for the message to be taken seriously. It was important to come back and to, you know, try to make amends as best as, best as possible. And who were the people you met when you came to Sri Lanka? I mean, uh, this was part of your charity that you were here, was it? Yes. So we met um, several people who worked in the hospital. So we went to the, um, you know, the main hospital in Colombo. Uh, we also met um, with some religious leaders. And I also met the prime minister and the president at the time. What uh, was their message to you? Mm. Well, I mean, you know, the, the standard message of condolence, I think, you know, we were kindly hosted um, at the Prime Minister's house for tea, you know, where they said, obviously, they were sorry about what happened. And I think, you know, what's most important is that, you know, no matter who is an officer, they're, you know, hopefully giving to support to what we're doing to help rebuild the country. And, and uh, um, among the people that you met, apart from the politicians, what was the feeling like when you met people who were affected by uh, these attacks, uh, people who are trying to rebuild their lives? Mm -hmm. So actually at, a, at an event organized by Caritas, we met a few of the other you know, victims and their families. And that was extremely powerful. You know, you just, 
uh, I think it's difficult to describe how it feels to to meet other people who are in a you know you never would have met were it not for this. But I think you know it's difficult to find the right words to describe that. But I am glad that I that I had the opportunity to meet those people. And what has the response been like for your for this charity? Uh, um not just uh, maybe not in Sri Lanka, but, but in other countries, maybe in your country? I think, you know, the response has been great. I've been, you know, a bit overwhelmed by how positive people have been about it. I do think I've received a single negative sentiment from, from everyone, from anyone. I mean, bringing it back to Sri Lanka, you know, even on, a, on social media, I've got dozens of nice messages from people, you know, saying, you know, how much they appreciate um, what we've done, which is incredible. I never expected that. So no, the response has been almost actually completely positive. So I'm very happy about that. Would uh, an incident like what happened on Easter Sunday prevent you uh, or your family from actually visiting Sri Lanka in future? I think you'd have to say no, because the point of, of terrorism is to, to terrify, to scare people. And if you are intimidated, then you've let them win. So I, I'd have to say no. What goes through your mind when uh, when you know that you know there were individuals who had some sort of motive uh, to to meet uh, when they carried out this attack? I think again, it's something I'm very much trying to avoid thinking about, especially you know given that it's so close to what happened. But the most important thing is to try and get to these people ideally early on enough to change their mind, and if not, then late enough to or early enough to prevent it from going ahead. Something that some people have been asking, even politicians here, uh, even not just politicians, but even the Catholic Church, if they would ever forgive uh, the people uh, who were involved in this, uh, this, this brutal attack, would something of that nature ever go across your mind? Not yet. Not yet. Um, I think, yeah, the people themselves, I, I think. It would be a betrayal to, to forgive for now. And and uh, uh, talk to us about you, David. I mean, uh, we, we've read a bit about you. Uh, what are you uh, doing apart from uh, uh, your involvement in this charity? What are you doing back home? Uh, so I'm actually uh, right now in Singapore. Um, so I've moved to Asia to, um, to build a company, actually. So that's what I'm up to at the moment. But my family are back in London. I've also graduated from university. So I'm here um, working on a fintech startup with my business partner. And, you know, very excited to have been able to move during COVID, which is very cool. Um, but I really want to come back to Sri Lanka. You know, as soon as things open up, I want to come and see, you know, some of the equipment that we've donated, come and see the people of Sri Lanka again, because, you know, we were so well received last time. It was lovely to meet everyone. Everyone was so hospitable and kind to us that uh, it's definitely a priority for me to try and come back. And, and what sort of, you mentioned equipment, what sort of equipment have you uh, um, donated, David? So the last thing we donated was a ventilator to Colombo North Teaching Hospital for coronavirus. And then before that, we donated some patient monitoring systems. And before that, we were in the process of donating 100 um, hospital beds to hospitals around the country. We've delivered 50 so far. But because of COVID, you know, the, the production of the final 50 was interrupted. So I want to get back and you know, make sure that, that that goes ahead. And are there still funds coming into your charity to, uh, to help out uh, uh, in the work that you're involved in? Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely been more difficult. Um, during COVID, there's still a trickle coming in from, you know, some online events that we've organized. But we're really looking for new ways to raise all of the time. Do you see yourself and your family now moving on, uh, you know, years ahead, uh, like getting over what has happened and like now you, you graduated, uh, you're involved in the business, your little brother, right? Uh, um, how old is um, Ethan? He's 13. He's Actually, 13. He, just, he just turned 14. Is, is, is he, uh, does he like try to recall the past or is he moving on as well now? I think he still, he still finds it very difficult to, to talk about it. You know, as as with anyone of that age, but I think you know everything considered, he's doing very well. He's back at school. Okay. He's doing, you know, he's making everyone proud. So, and how's your dad? Happy. Dad was uh, your dad was affected uh, by the attacks as well. He had some injuries as well, right? Is he is he doing good? 
he's he's okay physically definitely um i think he just you know he actually only had a few scratches um you know which is it's difficult to comprehend but you know he's doing his best that he can and and uh, uh finally uh david what is the future hold uh for you as an individual and what would you think you know where we talk in, in a world where there's still terrorism there's still you know pandemic how do you see the world evolving how do i see the world evolving that's quite a question i think you know one thing that's very important for me is that you know we don't lose anyone else that we could have saved both with the pandemic and with terrorism with everyone you know we all have to come together and realize we have far more in common than we do that separates us and it's often forgetting that that leads to conflicts but i hope that covid has you know made us realize that we can't be safe unless everyone wants us to be safe right david we'll leave it at that uh, thank you for your time uh, and uh, all the best to you and to your